Go ahead. Reagan should have been impeached. We're talking and, about the secret man. And uh, George Bush Sr. should have been impeached for for serious, serious um, contraventions of the law. You know, like where where uh, you know, like when Reagan was, and he knew about uh, the Contra Gate. He knew about the Iran Contra. At least he knew about the Iran. Uh, he actually was talking about how we'll, you know, they, they've got him. I, I think it was on tape, but definitely witnesses saying, you know, like before they ever started dealing with Iran, you know, we'll just pretend that it's uh, it, that it's to. Uh, Negotiate with the people who the moderates in Iran. There were no moderates in power in Iran, eh? and that wasn't the that wasn't the interest. So uh, he was a uh, he was uh, complicit, at least in the Iran part of it. Uh, he should have been impeached. Uh, Bush Senior knew about it, and he hid this stuff. His knowledge of knowing about it. Or he, he hid uh, he hid the fact that he knew about it. He should have been impeached. Whereas you know you get uh, I'll be talking about it more. You get in the Clinton administration, you get the Republicans getting on their high horse about Clinton doing stuff that was morally wrong, like lying to his wife, hiding. Uh, an affair with uh, Lewinsky and stuff like that, and kind of pussyfooting around with the uh, wording as to uh, whether he had sex with her or not. Wow, you know, like, who all does that really affect? Well, it affects his family, and then Monica Lewinsky, and maybe her family, up until it gets discovered. And then it, uh, you know, her family. So, you know, he, she was saying, oh my gosh, like uh, when Kenneth Starr wrote up his report, uh, she was saying, I, I just don't want to see. Yeah, he had to put all the detail in, all the juicy detail. And she was saying, geez, I sure don't want my dad to see it. Well, you know, that's different from Iran Contra, where it affects so basically the whole world. So I do want to mention Kenneth Starr. I'll mention it. Uh, I've been told by uh, someone who was raised in the same religion as me that Kenneth Starr, Ken Starr, whatever you want to call him, Dark Star, um, that he belonged to the same religion I was raised in, and I'm going to mention Church of Christ. Now, uh, in uh, Bob Woodward's book about these scandals, he says he was the son of a Baptist minister. I don't know if he got it wrong. What I was raised on was more Baptist than Baptist, okay, the Church of Christ. And I don't belong to it anymore. I gave it up even before I hit a university. So my parents wouldn't understand that it was university that made me uh, not just skeptical, but cynical about the whole affair. But uh, Ken Starr, if you're still alive, you should have died of embarrassment. If you're dead, I know where you're at. If your beliefs are true. When you belong to the Church of Christ, you're not supposed to drink, swear, gamble, dance, oh, smoke. You're not supposed to smoke. What did this guy serve as? Uh, but one of the things he served as before he became a special uh, prosecutor in the Clinton, uh, what ultimately became the impeachment case, was he uh, served uh, as a, uh, he defended a certain company called Brown and Williamson. Hope I got that right. Brown and Williamson. Now, what sort of products did this company um, manufacture and market? Cigarettes. Cigarettes. Well, the big trouble is he's defending people who are committing slow motion murder. He's he's uh, defending people who are committing murder on the installment plan. At the very least, manslaughter on the installment plan. You know, like how much life, ex how much on average would people lose off their life expectancy if they were kind of like an average smoker? Ten years? Well, you know, like if if uh, if a person was in Granny's will and Granny's 80 years old and it looks as though she's going to live to be 90 and uh, wax Granny. 
you know, and takes 10 years off her life expectancy, uh, that's murder. That is murder. So, Ken Starr, you know, like if you're watching down in uh, the depths of hell, I'm afraid you'd be one of the briquettes burning uh, people down there. Uh, serves you right. And uh, if you're not dead yet, you should die of embarrassment and uh, go to hell because you are, if you, but your belief system is it, true, you are going to burn in hell. So I will cover this again uh, later on. Yeah, but there's a lot of Christians, mm. well, people who call themselves Christians mm. out there right mm. now, that it's really shocking for me. When I was little and, and my dad was teaching me the Bible, I would ask him uncomfortable questions mm. because it didn't seem there seemed to be contradictions in not only within the Bible but within like um, how Christians behaved and the Bible you know and mm. different things so um, and uh, my dad and I had a hard time getting along when I was young and eventually he really he was very glad he told me that he was really proud of me and um, when I was an adult he, he told me I, I would have made a good farmer which that would have been uh, the best compliment he, he could give me because um, uh, that to him right so and I, I took it that way that was uh, wonderful and um, but anyway, what I was going to say about, um, it's shocking, looking for me, looking around at all these big uh, Christian temples and churches and stuff like that, and it's like, how many years after the Reformation, you know, and uh, Christians well, can uh, talk to their uh, own God, you know, they don't need, they can read the Bible on their own, no. they don't need to be a member of a church, and why... The king. Um, it's more than 500 years after the beginning. Yeah, and um, I mean, Jesus had said that uh, uh, my kingdom isn't of this world or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, whenever, I mean, when you're told, well, whatever your church is, this is God's house. Well, it's it's not. And um, I think God's got a better house. <laughs> it's he, not of this world. Exist. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's his not, you know that it's not, this world and so kingdom. why is all the money going well, to she, build this stuff and build these uh, huge temples to affluence, yeah. you know, like every one of those of things should be used really to churn out a hospital, if not elsewhere in the world where it could do some good, at least in places like the United States or Canada or whatever, these huge monuments to basically it's just read yeah and I there's a lot of really good people that go to church every Sunday whatever church they happen to go to and um, some Wednesday like, uh, and my they're, church. they're filling the collection pan and or whatever putting in tithings or like some people have a percentage that they put off of their paycheck and it's all um, calculated you know and whatever but where's that money going to and and you really have to wonder about um, things like uh, campaign contributions or whatever and, and oh, they, a lot of it gets involved uh, Pat Robertson was a political heavy political operator you should have died of embarrassment if you're still alive you yeah. oxymoron well he's not even very oxy and how Christian sharp. is that you know mm. if where is the money going to mm. and you no. don't need if you're a Christian. Why why are you going to church on Sunday? You know, d can't you read the Bible on your own? If not, then perhaps read it every day. For um, Pete's you sake. need to. Um, there are reading programs available. Uh, often, uh, local public libraries will provide uh, assisted reading programs and stuff like that. Maybe learn how to read a little bit better so that you can. Um, actually comprehend what's in the Bible. The way and to learn how to read is to do it. Yeah, you just read. Just read yeah. a little bit. You know, read I basically learned soccer on my own and played a little bit of it, but uh, for Pete's sake, uh, you and know, like, uh, I'm an agnostic, and uh, yeah. that's not an atheist. Get that straight. 
but uh, I, I don't believe in, in God or the truth of the Bible or in Jesus or whatever. As but here's the thing, yeah. on average, uh, it, it yeah. most days I read out of the Bible. Yeah. Like uh, like uh, I was reading a Creole Bible a while back, yeah. uh, worked my way through that, taught myself Creole. See, I, I, I didn't have to I know. see some There's, of the um, I have, yeah, haven't teach me met anybody, I think, who's read the Bible as much as you have. <laughs> you know, you might be right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so... When I get treatments, uh, it's usually I read the uh, Old Testament in the original Hebrew. Check that out. And uh, recently I've been reading here, actually just got a little copy put out by the Gideons of the New Testament in French. So, uh, you know, like, um, I know you can teach yourself how to read. You can teach yourself how to read. I've done it with other languages. Language yeah, language. once you know one, then you can learn another quite easily. Mm. Mm. You already knew English. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are huge differences from language to another. Like uh, when you make a jump to French or to uh, less so to German, but French or Spanish, you've got so much of the vocabulary. But the the fact that you know English has helped you learn all these other languages through the Bible because you already know where the story is going to. Well, I already know the Bible story. Yes. Okay. But it's not so much knowing the English. I mean, I could know that stuff just by having been taught this stuff, right? Especially, okay. I always like starting with the Gospels because it's just a simple narrative. Okay. You don't have to worry that so, much. So yeah, you could, mm -hmm. I, that's a good point. Yeah. So even if you don't actually know any language very well, if you know the story, you could to, pick up the Bible. And to that read should it, to get, read it. Yeah. You know, linguists say the real language is not the written stuff. It's what people speak. Mm -hmm. So if you speak it, and you know, uh, that would be one way to teach yourself. The, the nice thing is when you're reading a historical account, you don't have to worry that much about, uh, until you got people talking in the present, about uh, tense, for example. It's, it's the basic story is going to be told in something like a past, past tense. Uh, some languages don't have a past tense, strictly speaking, they'll have something like perfective or imperfective. But yeah, uh, if you're a true Christian, church is not the place for you. If you are a true Christian, you just need to actually read the Bible on your own, talk to God on your own, and um, meet with just a couple other people and talk about. Um, yeah, religion. I mean, it looks it as though the, uh, the weekly Eucharist or breaking of bread or Lord's Supper, whatever it is, uh, you want to call it is it looks as though it's a social thing but it doesn't have to be this big social thing and i think it'd be as pauline says far preferable if it no. wasn't like it didn't it could be a deck dinner mm -hmm. and um, i don't I, I i'd rather have people doing bible study you know like where they sit together you know like pauline and i have actually gone through the gospels did we we didn't go through the whole of the new testament we went through the gospels right the story of uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? Yeah. We've gone through them. I think uh, one time it was like at least one of the Gospels just went through in one sitting or something like that. It doesn't this take long. And, uh, you know, we're just saying, what is this? What is that? What is this? I, I, you know, for you Christians out there, I don't want to say, but some of our interpretations were of, uh, you know, what was happening at the uh, crucifixion uh, in terms of the darkness from noon until three or whenever it was. Uh, the sixth hour to the ninth hour, or what was happening when uh, people were, it says in one of the gospel accounts that uh, that uh, the veil of the or curtain of the temple was ripped, torn from top to bottom, I think it says, and uh, the earth shook and uh, people uh, rose from the grave and walked, and they were seen walking and stuff like that, and I don't want to really say what happened. Um, a couple of days later, uh, the third day, as it's uh, described in the Bible, the Sunday uh, when Jesus uh, rose from the grave, or was uh, said to have risen from the grave, because uh, again, there there seems to have been something that scared the uh, 
people had been put in place, I think it was uh, put in place by Pontius Pilate, on the, uh, re at the request, urgent request, it was actually kind of like blackmail, uh, uh, by the uh, Jewish authorities. I'm not going to say the Jewish, uh, Jews, but the Jewish authorities, or many of them, some of them. And, um, you know, they were saying, well, you know, he's, he's claiming he was going to die and rise from the dead. We just uh, know that uh, one or some of his followers are going to come and steal his uh, corpse, so make sure you post a, a guard there. That was one thing, incidentally, that, that was never emphasized when I was a kid getting taught this stuff. Mm. That uh, the Jewish authorities were saying, hey, you know, someone's going to come and steal this body. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, the guards flee, fled, I should say, and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, like, uh, if I can read this stuff, I, I read a lot of stuff, you know, like, uh, but I, I take time to read. And it's not just the Bible, you know, like, uh, sometimes when I'm getting treatment, uh, I won't just read the Bible, I'll read the Srimad Bhagavat. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's a kind of like a, uh, it's one of the Puranas, it's not it some of the most sacred stuff in the Hindu tradition, but uh, there you go. Uh, Sometimes I'll read the Quran, the Noble Quran, the King Fahd version of it, uh, you know, and uh, I don't, can't say I read it in the original Arabic, and incidentally, when I'm reading the Shrike Shrimad Bhagavatam, I'm studying it in the original Sanskrit, okay? And same thing with the Quran, I'm studying it, and i.e. struggling through it in the uh, original Arabic. So, uh, you know, like, uh, why read James Patterson? Like, first thing, like, why get involved in the swamp that is the internet? You know, put that time away and read stuff. And read some substantial stuff, not James Patterson. Like, I read Agatha Christie every so occasionally, but I tend to read it in French. You know, I'm kind of going or through the murder language, in the, uh, to, yeah, language other, other than a uh, foreign language. Yeah. French isn't a foreign language in Canada. Um, yeah. For some people it is a very foreign language, uh, but that's just, uh, you know, that's their problem. Unfortunately, sometimes they make it uh, other people, a problem for other people. Or, uh, you know, I've got uh, maybe a dozen or so uh, Agatha Christie novels in Dutch. So again, you know, like I, I just uh, Dutch is something that you can learn once you know not yes, so much English I, but uh, German. Honestly, I don't know how to put things on hold that way. Like I'd mm -hmm. wanted to put the French version and the English and then go through things that way myself. Oh, that's the best way to t um, teach yourself a language library, if you've got a bit of because I thought ah, oh, I can learn how to read this by mm -hmm. looking at some really. Um, uh, valuable, I don't know, whatever. Some of the books that uh, are recommended reads for yeah, whatever. So, I you know what I mean. Yeah, Something so, that some bucket list sort of things sure. according to. So I'm I'm reading the unbearable <laughs> likeness of being in the original sure. in English. I, I'm uh, two okay. words in one with one stone. Right? There, so, there and that's what I wanted to do, and I tried to do it at the library, but I couldn't. Mm. Um, like our library doesn't have the French stuff. I was very disappointed when I realized how um, unavailable it is. What do mm. I have to move to New Brunswick so that I can work on this project? You know, a bilingual I mean, province, honestly, the only bilingual province, as you know. Because we should have that. We should have those things available. In, we live in a, yeah. what should be a bilingual province. And honestly, why aren't these books, say, like the, I'll just use the unbearable likeness of being for your uh, example, you know, just why isn't that or 1984 or whatever, why isn't that available in, uh, translated into, what, maybe Blackfoot or something like that, you know, at the library. Like, these should be at the library so that people can go through and, and teach themselves a local native language, which everybody should know. Everybody should know in Canada, Canada both should be. French mm -hmm. and English and a native language that is one. great near where you are. So the school system should be teaching that. 
And I was uh, saying Canada should be a bilingual uh, country, uh, but it really should be trilingual. Yeah. Uh, you should be required in school before you get out of school to be at least exposed to a, a third language, not yeah. a foreign language, you know, like uh, an indigenous language. Yeah. So, I don't so around know. I here it should be black. I can't see a reason why our school system, our public school system, and I know some people are really desperate to get out of high school and start their lives, but honestly, it should go until you're 25. And I, there's a lot That's of young people. That's required school? Yep. Lo- it should at least people. go to age 20. Yeah. Not age 18. Because age you're not, 20. your prefrontal lobe isn't developed until you're 25 anyway and you shouldn't be getting out there and you're not you're not a grown-up yet until you're 25 and if uh, the move to try to encourage people to vote at a younger age and stuff like that and I, I understand you're a cute little guy well, he got scared when I looked over he came well, right he, he should get scared he shouldn't he be shouldn't down be on I don't the, know why yeah, he's down there I'll have to fill up his bird feeder yeah, yeah. He's, that's why he's on the ground yeah he's, he's looking sleeping. yeah he's going to get killed by yeah. a cat so anyway, um, what was it, where was I on that? Uh, you're talking about uh, 20 year olds. Oh so yeah. Uh, no, you're talking about 25. people wanting to take, people the, wanting voting to take the voting age down. And I was hearing sounds, someone recently When I was 16, younger, I thought, yeah, that's a good idea mm-hmm. because I want my my uh, opinions to matter. And that, well, you haven't really. Um, you need to grow into your opinions, honestly, and. Feel, feel them through, make sure that they're... I mean, my views on a lot of things have changed as I've gotten to um, live them, <laughs> live, live with them, and uh, had more of a, um, I don't know, more, more input from more of a world view <coughs> on my views, and that has, has altered my perception on things and um, I'm very grateful for that and honestly the move to have people voting at a younger age just makes them more makes society more likely to vote in aggressive people and in particular um, whoever the yellows want them to vote for they're more young people are more um, they do like young. susceptible to marketing when they're young and uh, so honestly you know where my stand is on that just you need to go to school for a long time you need to be learning um, more languages while you're in school those need to be taught and uh, critical thinking why why are we not learning that until university and we don't. It's. I don't know Strange. if it's required. It's not even logic, required. I mean, you can es- take it. Especially informal logic should be absolute, uh, ab- absolute requirement. I think uh, above and beyond anything else, the yeah. informal fallacies, because it's not so much an argument thing, and that's the way so many people see it. You know, I want to crush other people's arguments by saying, ah, you know, this is a straw man argument or two coque argument. No, 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 no. Please. It sh- what you should be doing is framing, I hate that word, uh, the, the argument in your own mind. It should be a debate or something like that. And maybe not even A versus B, but A versus B versus C versus D. A lot of different arguments swirling around in there. So what it really is, is you want to avoid informal policies, not so much when you're arguing with people, or when you're discussing things with people, but when you're considering things in your mind. Stats might be the second most heavily required uh, thing, but uh, what it should be is languages. I think Pauline is right. Language, what should be stressed, languages, and on the scientific side of things, uh, mathematics, and in between statistics and uh, is it a magpie? Yeah, I think so. Just squawking away. Oh, he was loud. Well, I, I don't know what he's looking for. I think he's looking for uh, to prey on the, the 
these wee little birds. I've seen magpies do it. They tend to yeah, do it with the I have fledglings. So. Yeah, they'll peck their eyes. It's really terrible. Tried to rescue we tried one to rescue one that he'd gotten. He was yeah. getting sat upon by at least three magpies. Wasn't it? Yeah. They were, were such cowards. They'd uh, run in and take a peck and sit back and then another one would come We in. should have gotten some antibiotics for the little guy. That probably is what did him in. We were just trying to keep them in a cage and keep them fed and watered and stuff. Yeah, yeah we didn't have them very well. I think uh, it's one of its parents uh, thought we had it inside. So then it was trying to Stumbled. come down the chimney? It got, it got caught in the chimney. So. It ended up really badly. Well, I don't even like thinking. No. Um, anyway, because, yeah, we were just trying to help. But it didn't work out. Well, it, it wasn't just zero, was it? Yeah. We got time Maybe to handle one well. or two of these? Just I don't know. Yeah. I'll look at the time. You have five minutes. Hi, right, five minutes. That should do. So, Manitoba Names, the story behind Manitoba Names by Ted Stone. He's got quite a name, eh? Anyway, uh, Noble Guard Stone. Anyway, uh, it's got, uh, you know, where these names come from. It's not nearly as exciting as it could or should be, I suppose. Yeah, you can't say should. So many of these names are just named after people who worked on the railroad or something like that. Or, mm. Or named after the postmaster or postmistress. That uh, is interesting. Yeah. 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 And you know, the sad thing is, uh, there's at least one case where uh, there was a um, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant name, basically, and the indigenous people of the area wanted to name it its traditional name, mm -hmm. and they got slam dunk shameful, absolutely shameful. What should happen is uh, Lethbridge should be called something like Sikokotoks or Sikokotoki. What does that mean? Oh, Lethbridge, William Lethbridge. Lethbridge was named after him. I gather never visited Lethbridge. Maybe not even in his dreams. So um, he was, I think, someone who was involved with the, a variety of different things, probably bringing the rail in. But uh, I suspect primarily involved with the coal industry. That's what's at the back of uh, Lethbridge is uh, basically taking off. Now, what's the, what does Sik Okdoki mean? I'm mispronouncing it and I probably got that a little bit wrong at the end, but Sik means black, Okto, like Okotoks. Okotoks is a place where there's a big uh, glacial erratic uh, near the town and stuff like that. It means rock, black rock. That kind of describes Lethbridge. Black Rock, what is that? It's cool. So Lethbridge's name, uh, because Lethbridge really didn't have, well, Lethbridge didn't have much to do with Lethbridge, and because Sikko Doki is such a uh, descriptive a name for Lethbridge, it should be changed back to that. And yeah, uh, it should happen a lot of different Now ways. we have a bridge. Yeah. Which people probably think that Lethbridge, the name, has something to do with a great big black bridge. Well, you could call it the Lethbridge Bridge, thing or something like that. Yeah. No, um, anyway. It's a marketing thing. I know what you're yeah. uh, what you're saying, but uh, yeah, you got to change that. No. Okay, go ahead. Anyway, any rate, uh, so uh, it's not because there's so many names. Uh, now he does try, like with German. There's a lot of German names south of, like um, south of Winnipeg, for example, because the Mennonite. Uh, Influence so one might be Blumenthal or something like that, and he does go through the German stuff, Stein 